welcome to Red Carpet With. I'm your host, Raja Azuni, back again this week for another episode of RCW. Our guest today is a very familiar voice on the airwaves. From DJ to radio announcer, she's continued to hone her craft, rising to become a leader in her field, doing something that she truly loves. It's been more than 20 years and she's still at it and shows no signs of slowing down. So Red Carpet today would like to welcome the COO of Star Radio Group and President of Commercial Radio Malaysia, Kutsia Kaha. Thank you. Hi, Thank you. welcome <laughs> to the show. <laughs> Okay, Kutsia, now, it really, if, if there's anything that anyone can attest to is the fact that you eat, sleep and breathe radio. Uh, yes, one more thing. I dream radio sometimes. Right, okay. Yes, I do. And you've certainly come a long way. So, what initially inspired you? I mean, what sparked it all? Um, from a very mm -hmm. small age, actually. My, uh, I come from a, a very... Um, musical family um so i always had that love for music and when i was growing up the only way you could get connected to music especially the newer music uh and listen to your favorites was actually the radio yeah so at the, in those days there, there was a uh, the blue network which later became radio 4 which has now become tracks fm right and so i grew up listening to some of the best music there and my absolute favorite channel growing up was actually fm stereo because um, Malaysian radio uh, prior to uh, the mid 80s was all in mono with the exception of that one channel which is called FM Stereo. Um, so I knew by the time I was 14 that this was it. That was what you wanted to do? I wanted to be in radio. Right, okay. Yeah. So when did you get your big break? Big break was mm. uh, after Rediffusion, I got a call to say that FM Stereo, my favorite channel, right. was being turned into another station called Radio Music. Mm -hmm. So um, they told me, uh, why didn't you come along? So mm -hmm. I thought, okay, but of course, the full-time jobs were only given to government servants. Mm -hmm. So I was there as a part-timer, um, you know, with almost daily shifts. Um, and that's when I think people got to know uh, my voice and my personality. Mm -hmm. Um, I love radio so much and in those days there was no such thing as a private radio station sure. that um, the director general at that time um, for RTM was uh, Datuk Jafar Kamin. Mm -hmm. So I actually went up to him like, I really want to work in radio, can you give me a full-time job? Right. And, and he was like, but you're not a government servant, you know? Mm -hmm. But he told me, he said, don't let go of your dream though. So uh, I went to him um, also again because I was then offered a job at a company that was newly created back in 1995, mm -hmm. uh, 96. Uh, they got me on board, but when they offered me the job first in 1995, it was a company called Astro, and everyone like went, who, what, mm -hmm. you know? So I went to him first to get his blessing, and I'm like, I don't want you to think that I'm abandoning radio music, but I've got this job offer. I know yeah. it's with a company that no one's even heard of, and he said, you should go. Right. Yeah, he said, this is your next journey in life. He said, you should go. So I will always thank him and my parents as well, actually, for saying, yeah, so what if no one's heard of this company before? Just go. Right, you know? okay. So And I, then I was there for 17 years, so that was another chapter of, of my course. life. Of yeah. course. I mean, you know, the rest, as they say, is history. Yeah, right. it allowed me then to expand mm -hmm. and then become a manager. So from a manager, network manager, general manager, vice president, and I'm now one of the evil bosses, so, <laughs> so to speak. Yes. One of the suits, I'm told. I am, yeah. yes, yeah. I mean, really? All right, yes, really. So anyway, um, at which point, I mean, you've obviously been doing it for a long time, but at which point of your career did it dawn on you that you had arrived? I don't, wow. Um, I don't know whether you could say that I've arrived because I think there's still so much to do. You know, um, I don't think I have arrived at mm -hmm. my destination just yet. I think I've somewhat made a career for myself mm -hmm. in radio mm -hmm. that I love very, very much. And that's been fueled by passion and an incredible amount of support from my family. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think I've arrived just yet. Because really? Until I'm able to improve the radio industry in Malaysia even more, mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I don't really think I've arrived just yet. Okay, well, you know, I mean, you've risen up the ranks. Um, today, you're the CEO of Star Radio Group. Yes. And president of uh, Commercial Radio Malaysia. Yes. Right? So tell us about your role in both. Um, well, 
I love being the CEO of Star Radio Group, of course. Mm. I mean, because that's where I cut my teeth. Right. Because Rediffusion Cable Network then morphed into uh, Star RFM, mm -hmm. which then became part of the Star Media Group. Mm -hmm. You know, so basically for me, uh, in late 2012, when I when I joined Star Radio Group, it was like coming home. Mm -hmm. Because that's where I got my training, my big break and everything. Even though it was just a, a cable um, radio station at that time. But obviously, you know, it's grown and, and gone on to FM. Um, and I love sharing uh, my passion, mm -hmm. um, you know, with uh, the rest of the people, uh, you know, in mm -hmm. the company. Sure. And I love seeing enthusiastic, passionate people. And I love that because we have some very passionate, enthusiastic people who also love radio. So I'm hoping that this is going to be like, um, you know, a contagious you know, thing that people live, breathe, sleep, eat radio, right. you know, just right. like me. Okay. More of me, yay. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, it sounds great. Uh, hold that thought because we have to go for a short break and we'll return with more on Kutsia Kaha right after this. So Capital FM, which is for women, Surya, in Bahasa, we have Red in English, Largely Male, and 98, which is our Chinese station. This is Star Radio Group. This is where I grew up. So, this is where I am uh, every Friday evening. This is what I do, and this is where it all began uh, for me as well, actually, when I was 19 years old and um, starting off at Rediffusion as a part-time DJ and uh, coming back full circle to the same company basically um, which is the Star Radio Group uh, they, they bought over 98 and Red FM um, which is where I started back in like 89 or 1990 or something like that and uh, here I am again and I, I am thankful that I'm given the opportunity to still do what I love. So for me, it's not really a job. It's never a job when you enjoy what you do. It's a passion. It's a hobby that pays. <laughs> Vanessa Williams and Happiness, former actress, former beauty queen, and also an accomplished singer. That was from the 90s, actually. Kicking off the Sunday chill out here on Capital FM. I hope you're having a great weekend. 88.9 in the Klang Valley, 107.6 in Penang. Still to come, we have Gil Scott Heron, also Jeffrey Osborne, Eeny Meeny, which is a special request, but right now we have Willy Bobo. This is Spanish Greece, Capital FM. So show prepping usually involves, you know, going on the net, reading up on the stuff that you want to talk about, finding out more about a song, about an artist, current events, world events, today in history, etc. I just screen grab everything. So, for example, this would be my show prep um, uh, for Sunday. So, there's something here that I've taken from BBC News, and it says here the best game of 2015 by the British Academy Game Awards is something called Destiny. So, I talk about this because you'd be surprised how many women actually love playing computer games, right? And this one is a particular uh, passion of mine because it's a first person shooter. Um, those who like to play uh, World of Warcraft, that's an RPG or a role-playing game. I like FSP, which is, uh, sorry, FPS, first-person shooter. So I'm definitely going to be checking out this game. Same thing for us, like when we do auditions, we actually ask people to send in YouTube videos of themselves or videos of themselves talking because we want to see the personality, we want to see um, whether they can work on different platforms because now, just because you're on radio doesn't mean that you only talk on radio. So that's the thing. Um, the wonderful thing about media now is there's going to be this blurring of lines between TV, radio and all that because in the end, you're, everybody's going to be a multimedia personality. Yeah. Mm. Hi, we're back on Red Carpet With and today we're chatting with COO of Star Radio Group and President of CRM, Kutsia Kaha. Hi, okay. Uh, earlier on, um, we touched a little on uh, commercial radio uh, Malaysia, yeah. and um, uh, tell us about your role in that. I mean, you've just been re-elected. Yes, I have yeah. um, been re-elected. Um, I actually was a, a member representing uh, in my old workplace uh, in Astro, so I had been going for meetings and all that, um, you know, from the late 90s, early 2000s itself. Um, so I've been going for these meetings on a monthly basis for years and years and always um, uh, very um, 
enthusiastic about making sure that you know the rights of commercial radio in Malaysia are protected because policies change, mm -hmm. guidelines change, mm -hmm. and you know um, for commercial radio Malaysia or CRM, we always want to make sure, you know, I mean, no matter who's at, at the helm of CRM, the objective always remains the same, which is to ensure that the, you know, there is continued commercial viability where private radio stations in Malaysia are concerned. Mm -hmm. And the only way to make sure that there is continued commercial viability is to make sure that there is a level playing field for all the different medium that exists. Um, so, for example, at the moment, there's still something that we are, um, you know, um, in robust discussions with um, certain ads that are allowed, for example, in print, mm -hmm. but not allowed on radio. Mm -hmm. um, Previously, the reasons were like, oh, well, newspapers people buy, magazines people buy, but right. radio is free to air. Mm -hmm. Hence, your um, rate of responsibility, you know, is even greater, you know. Um, but the thing is now, with information so accessible, accessible, you know, at your fingertips, basically, mm -hmm. everybody, um, you know, in urban areas has smart device or access to smart devices or internet. So it's easy for them to form you know, uh, an opinion for themselves and make their own decisions without radio having to bear the burden of being accountable for every single commercial messages, you know, um, that come on air. Yes, we are accountable to make sure that the businesses or the products or services that are advertised mm -hmm. are kosher within the legal boundaries here in Malaysia, you know, but ultimately the choice of making that decision of buying into a service or a product remains with the consumer. Right. So at the moment, I'll give you an example. Slimming ads, for example. Um, you can open any newspaper, you can open any female magazine, and you will see numerous ads about um, dieting centers or health centers that provide weight loss management uh, services or programs. Those ads are not at the moment allowed on air, right? on radio. Okay. And for us, it's like, if they can read about it, why can't they hear about it? So that's something where we're currently in discussions with with uh, MCMC or SKMM. All right. um, also uh, working together with uh, other organizations in the industry, for example, like CMCF, mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, the advertising guidelines here uh, in Malaysia to see like, we want people to be able to make informed choices. Mm -hmm. It should not matter which platform they hear or see or watch the ads in. Right, okay. Sure, okay. Now, what makes a good radio station and what does it take to remain relevant in the industry? Well, first you have to know what it is that you want to do. Um, you know, there's so many different formats. Uh, there are stations which claim to have no formats. Previously, there was something called Jack, mm -hmm. uh, which meant basically uh, no format. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have streaming services now as well, right. like Spotify and Deezer available in, in Malaysia as well. So the thing is, um, who is it that you're trying to reach? And what is your business model? Uh, what is the risk appetite that you have? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to go after a very niche audience and not a mass audience, then you have to understand that advertisers are not going to be so um, enthusiastic about coming and advertising on your station. Because where advertisers and media buyers are concerned, it's always about the mass reach. Mm -hmm. You know, um, It's always about the ROI. Mm -hmm. So for every one ringgit that I spend, or every 1,000 ringgit that I spend, how many people can I reach? Mm -hmm. So if your station is going to be very niche, mm -hmm. then you've got to go on an angle that, yeah, my station may be very niche. It may be targeting only people from this age group to eight, this age group with this educational background who may live only in this certain uh, you know, residential areas, but there is zero wastage if your product or your service wants to target only these people. And I think this is where all TV and radio stations are, are moving to anyway. Mm -hmm. It's no longer about reaching two, three million people in one commercial break. Mm -hmm. It's about now reaching the targeted audiences for each campaign that you run. Sure. That will be more effective, I suppose. Yeah. yeah, you know, so I mean, one a bank, for example, could be running a, a campaign for women. So if they're running a campaign for women, then they'll be going to radio stations, for example, that have a larger makeup of women mm. uh, as their target demographic. Mm. Yeah. Okay, now, back to you. How do you remain on top of your game? And do you think it's harder for a woman to, you know, um, become a leader in this field? Not where I work, I can tell you that. <laughs> okay. I can tell you that the Star Media Group, you know, one of the things that struck me yeah. um, when I first joined them was just how many women in senior management positions there were and still are. 
uh, in the Star Media Group. It's one of the most, um, you know, uh, progressive companies that I've been in, actually, and I'm really proud to be part of the uh, organization, you know. Um, where I work, uh, that that is not the issue. But if we want to address the larger issue, yes, the broadcasting industry in Malaysia still has a long way to go. Right. There's still sexism that exists, mm -hmm. you know, at different, different levels. Sure. Yeah, the big boys club do exist. Do deals get done on the golf course? Yes, of course they do, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and uh, I don't play golf, you know, but um, if anybody wants to kayak with me, that's well and good. All you right. know, I'm there. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> okay. So, but given the choice then, I mean, um, being where you are at now, is there anything that you'd like to change? I'd like to change how we engage with the people. I'd like, I like radio to be able to engage the minds of the people. Mm -hmm. I'd like the regulations and the policies to be re-looked at again. Mm -hmm. uh, all Malaysian radio stations at the moment are governed by one act, which is known as the Communication and Multimedia Act of 1998. Mm -hmm. Now, there was an amendment apparently done, but that the amendment that was done recently involved mostly the telcos. Mm -hmm. It didn't involve the radio industry. Mm -hmm. So there are certain things in there that, that were, you know, uh, written back in 1998 you know, when social media wasn't in existence, when people didn't use the internet anything except for search engines and emails, mm -hmm. you know, and now you can see, for example, there's a, you know, a marketing mix, for example, with social media, um, other digital assets, uh, as well as traditional platforms like TV, radio and print, mm -hmm. you know, um, how people use the different mediums, um, it's changed. The amount of time that they spend on the different mediums have changed. And so how they interact as well, yeah. you know, with the different uh, channels that are available has changed as well. More often than not, um, people get in touch with their favorite DJ via Twitter or via Facebook. Sure. Yeah. Whereas when I was growing up, the only time you could get in touch with your favorite DJ, then you almost pay son, is when they you pick up the it. phone. Yes. You know, you call in the studio, hello, hello. You should hello. be so lucky oh that they God, pick up. Oh my God, oh my God, yeah. And now you don't, you know, you don't need that anymore because you tweet and say hey and they say hey back, you know, or they right. retweet something that you say. Um, but we need to, we need. I think we need to acknowledge the fact that mm -hmm. Malaysian radio listeners are an intelligent lot. Yeah, they're a thinking lot, mm -hmm. and I think we should give them the respect that they deserve by allowing them to have a robust discussion. You know, on radio, you you read articles that are written by columnists and editors in newspapers. Mm -hmm. A lot of those things we can't say. Uh, yeah. Just yet. Yes, there is a greater sense of responsibility because, you know, um, when you say uh, uh, something, people can't see your face on radio. Mm -hmm. So if I'm joking about something, for example, I could be delivering it in a deadpan manner. The person in front of me may know I'm joking because I'm like, yeah. you know, but on radio, sure. they can't see your face, their facial expressions, right. they can't see your gestures, of they course. don't know that you're joking. Yeah. Yes, there is a heavier sense of responsibility and accountability. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the, the commercial radio industry in Malaysia is ready to handle that. Right, okay. So what's next for you and Star Radio? Wow, um, we're changing the face of radio. Um, uh, which is an odd thing to say since you can't really see our faces on air. But, you know, um, we're engaging with uh, uh, different partners. And uh, mm -hmm. for us, we're actually bringing Star Radio Group to a different level. Uh, we do have some exciting announcements to make uh, in the months to come, sooner rather than later. Um, but one of the things that we're really proud of uh, in Star Radio Group is that we always treat our listeners as communities. They are community members. They're not just listeners, faceless listeners that you want to shove advertisers, commercials, uh, you know, for them to listen. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we've done uh, collaborative content, you know, things like we started things like Kamila Malaysia mm -hmm. uh, two years back. Um, everybody thinks that, you know, May 13 is a, 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 a terrible day to remember. You know, it's a black mark on our, on our history. We decided to use that date, actually, and start something about solidarity and unity mm -hmm. in the spirit of One Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So then we started Kamila Malaysia, which we celebrate every year on 13th May. So we want to change the perception that 13th May shouldn't be something that you... Um, 
think back and say, oh, well, that was not a very good day for our country, was it? You know, so we try to change that. Mm -hmm. uh, so every year we also go on this Kamila Malaysia Roadshow um, where all the stations get together and they start going throughout the whole peninsula Malaysia, you know, to uh, be with the people and find out what life is like in other places, perform random acts of kindness, mm -hmm. uh, etc. Um, we're very strong uh, when it comes to the rights of children mm -hmm. um, and women you know, and the development of families as well. Um, none of our stations believe in doing things like lawak bodoh, for example, you know, or slapstick humour. Yeah. And uh, you will find that none of our stations actually have things like um, uh, prank calls as a feature. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, as a community, uh, in Star Radio Group, where we are a community, we don't believe that that is the sort of thing that would develop the society. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, now, before we end... Um, what would you say to someone who wants to develop a career on radio? Wow, uh, you know what? There's so many avenues now compared to when I first started in radio. Mm -hmm. When I first started in radio, um, there were just a few options. You could either be an engineer, mm -hmm. a salesperson, mm -hmm. an administrator or, or manager, or you could become an announcer, a newsreader, mm -hmm. or a producer. That was it. Okay. But now, you could be a legal and regulatory head. Right. You could be a digital specialist. Mm -hmm. You could be a marketing person. You could be a digital salesperson. You know, uh, you could be a copywriter, script writer, uh, uh, the, the creative consultant. The possibilities are endless. Mm -hmm. And you'd be surprised that a lot of people who join radio actually don't have broadcasting as their background. Right. Yeah, so we've got lawyers, uh, engineers. I even once had a psychology graduate uh, who also joined, you know. Um, okay. Halim Osman, for example, when he joined us, he was actually an architect who was practicing in Boston. Right. Okay. Yeah, came back, did Roda Impian, and then joined radio. You know, so okay. you'd be surprised. People, some of the best people on radio actually come from different backgrounds. Okay. Yeah. So, all right, with that, thank you so much for coming to the show. Thank you so much for having me. All right, so, and that's all the time we have for you today. Now, for the latest updates, go to redcarpet.net.my and don't forget to watch Red Carpet Wave on ABN Channel 201 as we bring you interesting interviews with celebrities every week. Till next time.